Hello everyone, this is LP Showboat0099 and welcome to games I grew up with. This video is the start of a new series where I discuss the games that had significant impacts on my life throughout my childhood. Videos in this series will start with a detailed background of the game's development and release. This will be followed by a review of the gameplay and mechanics with special discussion of my experiences with the game when I originally played it as a child. So without further ado, let's begin talking about the first game I'd like to cover, TNN Bass Tournament of Champions for the Super Nintendo. TNN Bass Tournament of Champions is a fishing game that was first released on the Sega Genesis in 1993 and only in North America. The game was released on the Super Nintendo in Japan in September of 1994 and was followed by a North American release that November. In Japan, the game was published with the title of Larry Nixon's Super Bass Fishing by King Records. The game was published in the United States as TNN Bass Tournament of Champions by American Softworks, which is best known as being the original publisher for the first Grand Theft Auto game. The game has a Genesis exclusive sequel titled TNN Outdoors Bass Tournament 96 that was only released in North America and was published by American Softworks. The sequel was never released on the Super Nintendo due to the impending launch of the Nintendo 64. I never even realized the sequel existed until researching the background information for this video. So I quite obviously don't know a lot about it. In Japan, the game was titled after the professional fisherman that gave it his endorsement. In the US, the game was endorsed and marketed through the TNN television channel. At the time, TNN stood for the Nashville Network and was the first country music cable television network. The Nashville Network was rebranded in the year 2000 to the National Network when it became redundant with CMT, both of which were owned by Viacom and in the MTV Network. In 2003, the network's name was changed again to Spike TV and was marketed as the first network for men. The new name had nothing to do with film director Spike Lee, who at the time sued over the use of the name but ultimately settled the case and the name stuck. Today, the network is officially just named Spike. The purpose of the game is to compete in a string of tournaments across several different lakes where you attempt to catch the biggest bass that you can within a day. As you progress through the tournaments, the competition gets harder, but the fish get bigger, making the difficulty relatively even throughout the entirety of the game. In order to go fishing, you need a number of things. While the game starts you off with a row of lures in your tackle box, it is best to go out and get some more. You can buy lures, rods, and reels at the Bass Pro Shop when starting a new game and between tournament rounds. Lures come in many shapes and sizes, and as time goes on, bass will only go for certain types of lures. Lures also have color variations for type of weather, one for fine, one for cloudy, and one for rainy, meaning that there's three copies of any given lure. This impacts the bass's ability to see your lure. Lures tend to behave in two different ways as you reel them in. Some will come to the surface and others will go towards the bottom. I personally tend to like using the Bass Hunter, Fine Jig, and Spinnerbait lures. There are further two different types of rods, spinning and bait. The primary difference is cast strength as lures have a hidden weight to them. Light lures, such as the bait replicas and physically small lures, should be cast with the bait rod and heavier lures with the spinning rod. However, this can be influenced by the strength of the wind. Each lake has specific environmental conditions that include season, temperature, weather, wind direction, and wind speed. The season, temperature, and weather will influence where fish can be found and how likely they are to see your lure. Wind direction and speed affect casting distance. This is important as casting beyond 23 meters will result in a lost lure. Casting over the top of an embankment or pier will also lose your lure. The lakes are made up of several of what I will refer to as instances, similar to MMO dungeons. These instances are copied throughout the whole of the surface of the lake. Each instance type is tied to a certain set of conditions on the lake, such as water depth, presence of lily pads, and proximity and orientation towards a pier or embankment. The weather changes every 30 minutes and changes the fish in each instance, theoretically. So it's best to check for fish in as many different instances as possible and cycle them every time the weather changes. Bear in mind that if the weather hasn't changed yet, 
an instance of a stone embankment on one end of the map is the exact same as the same stone embankment instance on the other side of the map. Once you've entered an instance, you can now fish. Casting is fairly simple, just wait for the power bar to fill up and then cast. Just pay attention to wind strength and direction so you don't lose your lure. While casting, you can push B to hold back the strength of the cast in case you got a little bit too far on the power bar. You can also move the lure left or right while casting to get the exact position that you want. Once you've cast, the perspective changes to a top-down view of the lure in the water with a grid out in front of the boat. This is where you will try to catch a fish's intention and catch it. The goal is to catch big bass, though many other fish will be distractors, including small fry bass that are too small to keep, rainbow trout, catfish, and the dreaded loach. Keeper-sized bass come in three sizes, small, standard, and granddaddy. Those are, of course, my names for them, as the game never names them. Smalls should be avoided whenever possible, though in the initial tournaments you may have to have them. Standards can potentially be smallmouth bass in disguise and give you a lot of experience. Granddaddies are the biggest of the big and will likely set field and world records. You can only keep five fish in your live well at any given time to count towards the final weigh-in, so once you've got your best five, it's time to turn in for the day and have the total tallied and compared to the other contestants. I mentioned that smallmouth bass give a lot of experience. Yes, this means that the game does feature a leveling system for your character. As you level, you will gain points and retrieve in fighting, making it easier to bring in fish, though I honestly never notice a difference. The maximum level is 20, so far as I can tell. So why was this game so special to me as a child? The main answer to that question stems from my dad. When my dad was 16, he lied about his age in order to become a commercial fishing captain out of Half Moon Bay, California. He was always fond of fishing and instilled that fondness into me from a very young age. Back then, I had nearly infinite levels of patience and the satisfaction of catching a big bass was enough for me to really enjoy this game. However, I honestly never actually beat this game as a child. I only beat it later in life when I grew better at gaming and had a more solid grasp of the mechanics. Anyway. I hope that this has encouraged some of you all to go out and try this game, though I warn you that like actual fishing, you will need a lot of patience and time to fully enjoy it. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching. This has been LP Showboat 0099, and I will see you all next time.